Hello, my name is Chloe. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm bringing to you the fifth episode in a series I've started, which is Books I'm Daunted By. So the keen-eyed among you will notice, is that even a saying? Will notice that I'm in the same outfit, the same position and everything as the last time I did this. And that is because I was just sat at my desk today and decided, you know what I need to do? I need to start off two of these videos because who has time to relax? So if you are unaware, if you've never seen any of these video videos before, I will link the previous four episodes in the description, but it's where I pick five books from my physical TBR that I'm slightly too scared to start. Um, we talk about what they are and then I go away and read the first chapter or the first section of the book to give me a better idea of whether I need to bump them up on my TBR or whether I need to completely unhaul them. So we have five books to talk about today and I will get into what they are and why I'm daunted. The first book I have to talk about is Salem's Lot by Stephen King. So this book I have on my TBR because Brittany demanded that I read this. It's potentially her favourite Stephen King um, and I saw it for about 25p in a charity shop. I have read two Stephen Kings. I have read um, Gerald's Game, which I gave one star, and It, which I gave three stars. I'm preferring this to It already because It is like 1200 pages long and this is still a chunker. It's about 400 and basically 500 pages, but that is a lot shorter than it. I don't know anything about this. Every time I hear Salem's Lot, I just think about the um, cat from Sabrina that's called Salem. <laughs> so this says thousands of miles away from the small township of Salem, of Salem's Lot, two terrified people still share the secrets of those clapboard houses and tree-lined streets. One is an 11-year-old boy. He never speaks, but his eyes betray the indescribable horror he witnessed. The other is a man plagued by nightmares, a man who knows that soon he and the boy must return to Salem's lot for a final confrontation with the unspeakable evil that lies lives on in the town where no one is human anymore. This sounds weird. It sounds like Stephen King. Um, I am daunted because I haven't really loved what I've read from him before. We do have, we have an introduction. We have a one page prologue. Oh no, we don't. We have an introduction and then we have like a 13 page prologue. So I think I will read the introduction and the prologue. I'm not sure whether, or well, chapter one's quite short. I'll be reading a chunk of this to see what I think. Next, I have one that I can't even remember when I got it. And that is You by Joanna Briscoe. This is on my 21 books to read in 2021 list. And um, it's a teacher student romance is all I know. It says, 17 year old Cecilia is obsessed with her English teacher, the older married Mr. Dahl. She plots and speculates, yet she never dreams it could actually happen. But is it her imagination or is the high minded Mr. Dahl responding to her? Her mother, Dora, meanwhile, has preoccup preoccupations of her own. A move to Dartmoor was supposed to help reinvigorate her faltering marriage, but Dora soon finds herself increasingly drawn to the elegant, dangerously seductive wife of Mr. Dahl, Elizabeth. 20 years later, Cecilia returns home to face her mother and her past, but the secrets they thought were buried cannot be buried any longer. This sounds like a really good book. It sounds like everything I want in a book, but I'm just too scared to pick it up. And is that because it's everything I want? Um, how long is the first chat? Oh, very short. To get to chapter three, we're only 10 pages in. So again, I'll read a chunk. I'll see what we're feeling. Next, we have a very beloved book on booktube, and that is The Binding by Bridget, Collin Bridget Collins. Sorry, um, I managed to get myself a gorgeous hardcover of this book. I can't believe I was so lucky to get it, um, but I haven't bothered picking it up yet because I'm too scared because everybody loves it. So this is, um, imagine you could erase your grief. Imagine you could forget your pain. Imagine you could hide a secret forever. Emmett Farmer is working in the fields when a letter arrives summoning him to begin an apprenticeship. He will work for a bookbinder, a vocation that arouses fear, superstition and prejudice, but one neither he or his parents can afford to refuse. He will learn to handcraft beautiful volumes and within each he will capture something unique and extraordinary, a memory. If there's something you want to forget, he can help. If there's something you need to erase, he can assist. Your past will be stored safely in a book and you will never remember your secret, however terrible. In a vault under his mentor's workshop, row, on, row upon row of books and memories are meticulously stored and recorded. Then one day, Emmett makes an astonishing discovery. One of them has his name on it. So it does sound really, really good. Even the, the title page inside is gorgeous. There's gorgeous illustrations. How long is the first chapter? 
because I kind of want to read this right now, but I, one, I don't have space in my TBR and I'm too scared. The first chapter is about 19 pages long. That is perfect for a Chara chapter tag. I hope I love it. Um, next, I have When I Wake Up by Jessica Jolvi. This is another thriller that I got from A Box of Stories, if you saw my previous um, Books I'm Daunted by video. So I didn't ask for this. I probably wouldn't pick it up if I saw it myself, but I'm gonna give it a go because I got it from A Box of Stories. This is When Anna, a much loved teacher, and a mother of two is left savagely beaten and in a coma. A police investigation is launched. News of the attack sends shockwaves through her family and their sw small Swedish community. Anna seems to have no enemies, so who wanted her dead? As loved ones wait anxiously by her bedside, her husband Eric is determined to get to the bottom of the attack. He soon begins uncovering his wife's secret life and a small town riven with desire, betrayal and jealousy. As the list of suspects grows, it soon becomes clear that the only person who can reveal the truth is lying silent in a hospital bed. This is a gripping debut thriller for fans of Paula Hawkins and S.J. Watson. Um, I think my problem with thrillers, I don't like reading them where there's police involvement. It just I don't enjoy it. Um, I like more of a domestic thriller. So how long is the, the first chapter? It's only a couple pages and I believe some of it is made of text messages. So this should be fine. It's just chunky it doesn't need to be this long but we will i guess we'll see what it is and the last one here is is something quite different to what i'd normally read but one that i actually did kind of request and that is the hunters by cv frodsham so this is um c is claire who is laura one of my closest bookish friends um it's her colleague um who is also a writer so i had this for christmas i want to say from laura and it is signed and personalized to me um, and yeah, I really want to give it a go. I love supporting like indie authors like this. I've said indie, it is indie, isn't it? Yeah, there's no publisher written on here. I don't know, I never know how to tell if things are indie. Looks it. Um, <laughs> I see, I'm a bad booktuber. But this is a zombie apocalypse, end of the world story. Is it zombies? I don't know if it's zombies. It's civilization as we know it is dead. The overwhelming population and pollution levels have taken their toll on the world. Food shortages and significant employment losses mean people are crammed into overcrowded cities. The future looks terrifying. 17-year-old Aura is forced to live a secret life hidden from the hunters, a treacherous group of men and women hired by command. Hired by the command, sorry. Hunters kill first and question second. Human life means nothing to them. They boast about the suffering they wreak on the city's innocent inhabitants and spend their days in search of illegal children, dispensing with them over the city wall, whilst their families are executed by the hunters. Aura's parents are awaiting her 18th birthday, the day she can present herself to the command and become a legal citizen, but this will cost her parents their lives. Although her parents may be willing to accept this fate, Aura loves them too much and will never let that happen. How will she leave the city and escape the hunters? Will she carve out a new life in the wastelands beyond the city walls? Can anyone help her? Okay, maybe it's it's not zombies. Maybe I've made that up. I thought that was zombies. Join Aura on her heart-stopping journey as she endures love, betrayal and hatred and transforms from a quiet, shy, wom shy young woman wow, into a killing machine who will stop at nothing to, a to annihilate the evil that surrounds her. I can't speak. I've been talking for far too long. The chapters look pretty short, which we love. And yeah, I just really want to support... Claire, but I'm scared. So it's made this video. So those are the next five books I am daunted by. I don't know when I'll be updating this video. You will see hopefully five individual vlog clips of me reading sections of these books and then I'll wrap it up at the end to tell you what I've done with them. Hello, so it is a random day in April. I am lay on my living room floor. I'm currently in some sort of yoga position to be in front of the camera, so I hope you all appreciate it because I've just got comfy on the rug, so I'll be staying down here. Um, but I'm just not really feeling attached to any of my current reads right now, so I thought I would jump in and do the try a chapter tag for a couple of the books I chose. Um, the first one I'm going to start with is The Hunters by Claire Frodsham. Um, I think the first chapter is only about seven pages, so I'm going to sit and enjoy this now. How many of these I'm going to do, I don't know, but yeah, I just need a bit of a break, a bit of a calm down. So I thought I'd try some new books, some intimidating books. So yeah, let's see what I think of this one. Okay, we've read chapter one and I kind of like this. I'm definitely enjoying it way more than I thought I would already in eight pages, which is great. I thought I was going to really struggle to get into it, but this is kind of a mismatch. Mismatch? Mi what do I mean? Like a mashup. 
we're gonna crop that out because I just went on a bit of a weird tangent where I couldn't actually name any of the books I was talking about but it's giving me adult vibes of The Killables by Gemma Malley even though it's really not that kind of thing um but so far in eight pages we've learned quite a lot about the world I guess with this like there's quite a lot on each page um but we're learning that families are only allowed one child and um, when these children are born, they're given um, tattoos. It's like a, a barcode with their date of birth. Um, and some women can pay for an ultrasound to check for multiple um, pregnancies, but those are really, really, really expensive. So our main character's mother does not get the ultrasound. Um, and people who have more than one child at one time, um, so if there's any child found without a barcode, the child and all of the family are killed. And yeah, if a woman has twins, for example, one of the twins would have to be chosen to be dumped over the wall and to be told like survive or, you know, we don't really care. Uh, and if they successfully live for 18 years outside of the wall, they are allowed to come back in. Prisoners are dumped over the wall because they're seen as a drain on society. So they're gone. Who else is gone? A few more people were gone. Basically, it's a, so far, pretty typical dystopian setup, but I'm really enjoying it. I don't think I've ever read anything exactly like this, so I am intrigued. I was going to read another chapter, but I thought the, the point of the try a chapter tag is to read one chapter. I've read one, I've discovered I like it, so this is a firm stayer on my shelf. You are getting this great look of me first thing on a Sunday morning. But I realised I wanted to put this video up this week and I haven't finished filming the individual books. So it's fine. It's before 10am and I'm going to start Salem's Lot. <laughs> this is not a Sunday morning book. The first chapter is like half a page because Stephen King is something else. Um... I might read, he's written an introduction, which is like five pages. And then the first chapter is just over a page. So I don't, oh wait, that's all technically the prologue, but it's in parts. This is going to be a bigger task than I thought. I'm going to make a cup of tea, read the introduction, um, technically prologue. I don't know why I'm showing you this way. And that goes up to here. So that's quite a lot. It's not, it's only like 13 pages. Okay, let's do it. Okay, so I've read my chunk. I won't say I know what's going on, but I'm kind of vibing with it. I feel like I'm gonna have to, when I read the whole thing, I might find the audiobook and read along with it. I feel like that might help me a little bit more, but I like it. I don't think I need to say more than that. I, I can't tell you what's happening completely clueless. The um, introduction by Stephen King actually did make me tear up because he was talking about how um, his mom gave him books when he was younger and didn't like police what he read, only calling books trash and bad trash before she gave them to him. So he said that he thinks she would have enjoyed this one, chain smoked for the last hundred pages and maybe declared it trash but not bad trash. And I was crying for like no reason because I mean, I don't know Stephen King or his mother, but it was really emotional. Um, but yeah, so far we seem to have two men and a town where everything is like dead. Like there's no, there don't seem to be any people. There aren't any shops, like everything's boarded up. I don't really know what's going on, but I feel like it's going to be a fun time when I eventually get to it. Maybe like spooky season this year, I hope. Um, but yeah, time to get on to the next one or maybe a little bit later today but you will see it today we've got properly cozy now i need all the cozy vibes um i'm gonna make a start on when i wake up see what i think of this one out of all of the books in this video this is the one i'm probably going to be most likely to unhaul if i don't get on with the first chapter so we'll see um i need to actually remind myself what it's about i won't say it again because you will have just seen it but i haven't read the back of this in about a month so no, I'm just going to dive in. How long is the chapter? Very short, I think. I think we're looking at like seven pages, if that. Maybe I'll read the first two chapters because it is genuinely five pages long. I'll let you know. So I just did that very quickly. Turns out I really like the setup for this. I didn't think I was going to, but I like it. We've got a husband and wife. We're not really sure of the dynamic. Um, we're getting a bit of an inkling to 
who, wait, I should probably say what the story's about. So this is about a woman, a teacher called Anna, who is savagely beaten and in a coma. Um, we're set in Sweden. Anna seems to have no enemies, so who wanted her dead? As loved ones wait anxiously by her bedside, her husband Eric is determined to get to the bottom of the attack. He soon begin begins uncovering his wife's secret life and a small town riven by desire, betrayal and jealousy. So, yeah, so far we've got the teacher who's been completely beaten to within an inch of her life. And there's... I've read very few pages. I've read, like, less than ten pages. But I'm just liking the dynamic. So we have... A husband who doesn't seem to really care like he makes a reference to turning her life support machine off um we have another character called Penilla, who he nearly texts thinking of you too and then he doesn't he changes it to see you so there's obviously something going on there and then we have we go back to september of the year before we're now in march and there's a student of hers called daniel who's proven a bit challenging and he turns up after school hours and yeah i feel like this could be fun it is quite long it is nearly 500 pages long uh 485 to be exact so i feel like this could i might just save it for when i'm either really in the mood for a thriller or if i have a reading prompt to fill that's like read a book over 450 pages or something like that because i feel like this could be a good time just not right now okay so i've just popped that one back on the shelf um, I've changed my bookshelf yesterday, so it's proven difficult to find things. I'm not used to it yet. Um, but the last book on my list is The Binding by Bridget Collins. Um, I did check with Victoria, um, because she said there had been some problematic things this author was involved in. Um, I've now found out it is related to homophobic comments, um, which obviously I am not in support of. I do have this book. It is a gorgeous book. I'm intrigued by this. So I'm not gonna, for now, I'm going to, uh, as I haven't read the book yet, completely separate the artist and the art, um, see what I think of it. And if I really, really dislike it, then I'm, I'm going to get rid. Um, I'm not gonna try and keep it because it's pretty. We're, we're gonna see what I think. Um, it is, everything about it is gorgeous. And I just hate when such a person that doesn't need to behave how they are creates something beautiful. Uh, so we're looking at about 15 pages for the first chapter. So I'll read this quickly and let you know what I think. Okay, I am so intrigued. I don't normally read things like this. It's written way too weirdly for me to love it. But I'm so, so intrigued. I mean, first, just, we can't not be. But so far, this is just about a guy called Emmett, who is kind of doing some work on a farm. And he's been ill, all we know is ill. And the binder has requested him for an apprentice. But there's something to do with books, where books are, like, you can't have a book. And he had one one time, he bought one, and his dad said to burn it, but they decided to bury it? No idea. And now he's being sent off to be an apprentice for the binder. I really like the sound of this. I'm going to be keeping it. I went into it thinking it was going to have to be a buddy read book, that I wouldn't pick that up by myself. But just reading those couple of pages, I would read that. Maybe my reading tastes are changing, who knows? But either way, I'm trying to get the dust jacket on without stopping talking. Either way, this has been a very successful Try a Chats attack. There have been no unhauls from this, I don't think. I don't even remember all the books. What did we have? We had Salem's Lot, The Binding, When I Wake Up, The Hunters, and that's a good start, isn't it? What was the other one? So editing Chloe is going to have some work because I completely forgot about one of the books. We've only read four so far. I'm an idiot. So now it's time to sit down and read some of you by Joanna Briscoe. <laughs> and we're back. And I spoke too soon. This is going for the unhaul pile. Um, I was really excited about you. It's to do with a 17 year old called Cecilia who is obsessed with her English teacher, the older married Mr. Dahl. So I know that reading this 
on those parts of the story, I would have probably found it really interesting. Um, but the first, I had to read the first couple of chapters because they're only a few pages long. It's written, if it's far too highbrow for me. Like it feels like a classic, like it's trying to sound like a classic, which I can appreciate in certain classics, but this isn't for me. It's too wordy. I don't know. I'm not going to read it. I was really excited about it. I thought, oh, great, let's sit and read this. But let's just read, try and give you an idea what I mean. Once she had thought that her baby lived in her own mind only, projected onto passing buggies and strangers, the back of the dress glimpsed and lost. Yet the child had stayed there here all along, here where the wind blew and the pony's manes made limp flags. She had never gone away. I don't want to read that. It's not my thing. So unhaul. So we found an unhaul in the five books. I guess that is productive. Um, but I'm going to sign off now because I obviously have no idea what's going on today. I'm not with it. If you enjoyed this video, please do let me know and I will make sure I do a books I'm daunted by number six. I'm sure I will have time to do that and I'm sure I'll get the motivation to do that at some point. But I hope you enjoyed this one. Let me know if you have any strong opinions on any of the five books I've read in this video. I'll be very interested to hear them. But on that note, thank you so much for watching this video. I really do hope you enjoyed and I will see you in the next one. Thank you.